peace to the gods. How's everybody doing today? Today's discussion is on something that comes up quite a bit, and that is, should I challenge jurisdiction when I go to court? Challenging jurisdiction. You know, you're a lot of people, you know, that's like something that comes up all the time. You know, go in there and challenge the jurisdiction of the court. They don't have jurisdiction over me. You know, I'm a more or I'm a private citizen, or I'm an American citizen, I'm not a straw man, you know, all of that. You know, it's a really funny thing is like, when I first um, came into this information, um, I was lucky enough to read the Gene Keating transcript, it's called the Gene Keating transcript. And in there, you know, they had already had seen the result of constantly challenging jurisdiction and people challenging jurisdiction challenging jurisdiction challenging you know that wasn't that wasn't that wasn't working so i'm going to give you my thoughts on on challenging jurisdiction all right i'm not a, i'm not opposed 100% against challenging jurisdiction i just don't think that you should challenge jurisdiction initially when you first um when you very first uh, go into the court or when you first have some sort of interaction with the judge because when you challenge jurisdiction, you're kind of granting uh, jurisdiction to the court to determine jurisdiction. But how we were taught, how we come in is we do the acceptance for value. It's not a, a challenging jurisdiction. And there's a reason for that. The reason why is when you challenge jurisdiction or you foster any kind of argument with the court, they have to go into what's called fact finding which means that there's going to be some sort of bench trial or some sort of jury trial that you're going to go into. And a lot of people don't understand that. This is why you want to stay away from arguments. This is why that you were warned about this, even in the Bible in Matthew 5, 25, where it tells you, um, agree with your adversary before you go to court. BC hand you over to the judge, the judge hand you over to the bailiff, the bailiff cash you to prison. I tell you, you will not come out until you pay the very last penny. These are the debtors prisons that you have today that are operating off debt, currency and bonds. And uh, so you understand that, okay? So, so that's right, it's a traverse. When you, when you challenge juris, uh, uh, jurisdiction, it's called a traverse. You're traversing the charges. And that's not what you wanna do. You don't wanna, you don't wanna get into an argument with these people. Now, a lot of times though, let's talk about the reality of the situation. When you go into court, you know, a lot of people there hear people say things to say in court. But what you have to understand is a lot of those judges, they are ready for you. Um, you're not the first person that has come before them trying to do this, um, as well as the fact um, that they're not going to just roll over and just give up very easily. So a lot of times they'll try to force you into some sort of administrative hearing. Um, and you have to, at the same time, be just as, you know, um, like the belligerent claimant is something I like. Uh, you can Google that on the internet, the belligerent claimant. Um, you have to, you know, you have to, you know, let them know, like, no, I'm not arguing any facts as it relates to this particular matter. That is very, very key. You got to keep stressing that. That's going to put them in a position where they don't know what to do. And that's when they're going to try to force you. Because see, what they try to do is they try to say, well, you got to plead guilty, not guilty. There's no other plea. Even though we have a plea call of confession and avoidance. They don't want you to think there are any other pleas that you can do besides just guilty and innocent. And, you know, and then when you try to do something else, they try to force something onto you. That's when you can say something to the judge like, Your Honor, will your bond withstand the commercial liability that is being introduced into this courtroom today? These type of statements will get a judge in check when they see when you see they're trying to um, uh, help the prosecution or they're not exercising what they're supposed to be doing, which is an unbiasedness. They're supposed to be an unbiased arbiter in a dispute between two opposing parties. But a lot of times they not do that. They, they seem like they work more for the state than they do trying to, you know, uh, maintain some sort of neutral stance as it relates to the matter. So you got to understand that. So you got to have in your in your in your briefcase a lot of different things to to prepare for a lot of different situations. Um, you get in there and you start 
accepting something for value and they start rolling against you. You need to know what, what to go and you need to, you know, you know what, Yana, I can see right now that everybody in here is, you know, I might be confused a little bit because I'm trying to settle this matter and you don't seem to understand what I'm talking about. So maybe I'm a little confused. So if it pleases the court, I'd like to establish some things on the record. The first being what jurisdiction is this court operating under? Now, the Constitution for the United States of America only grants you two uh, criminal jurisdictions, one of the kind, then go into that spiel, you know, asking them what jurisdiction are you operating under? That is challenging jurisdiction. You're questioning them and always pose things in the form of a question. Stop telling these people, stop making conclusions of law on your own. You got to understand that anything you say can and will be used against you. So the, what cannot be used against you is a question when you're asking a question. So when you ask them a question, I'm sorry, Yana, would you, is this a civil or criminal matter? It's a criminal matter. Thank you. Let the record reflect that the action being brought against the defendant is a criminal matter. Now, sir, the Constitution in the United States only grants this court two criminal jurisdictions. One is under the common law. The other constitutes a condition of contract and the criminal aspects of a colorable admiralty jurisdiction. Now, sir, would you tell this court and myself under which two of these jurisdictions you're operating under? The Constitution for the United States makes it incumbent upon you to give me this information. It's your duty, sir. Your oath compels nothing less of you to uphold the Constitution. So would you please give me this information? See, and you get him stating it on the record. Get him talking. You know, you stop talking. You know, learn how to answer. Learn how to answer with a question. Are you a U.S. citizen? I'm sorry. Could you please tell me how you define U.S. citizen and where you derive that definition from? Are you a taxpayer? Are you so and so, just anything? You know, you got to learn how because, see, in law, the words that you think you know the meaning of, they don't really mean that in everyday parlance. So when somebody in the public is asking you a question, you always are looking for clarification on exactly what they're asking you. You know, are you asking me, am I an American citizen or a U.S. citizen? There is a distinct difference between the two. I'm sure you, you understand that. So these are some of the things that you want, you know, you learn how to ask. You, one of the most powerful things that you have to learn how to do is ask a question, answer a question with a question when you're in the field, because you're looking for clarification. You know, you're always looking for clarification. Always don't offer anything. The Fifth Amendment is probably one of the best things that they put in the Constitution because you got the right not to, um, you know, not to, uh, uh, not to, uh, you know, get yourself in a criminal uh, particular, you know, to uh, get, you know, impl implicate yourself in anything, you know. So you got a right to remain silent, and right, the silence of it is key for you to understanding that. That's why they have that maxim of law: the burden of proof is on he who asserts, not he who denies. If somebody's asserting something against you, then it's their job to prove it. You know, if they claim they have jurisdiction, it's their job to prove it. You know, they, they're asserting it. OK, we'll demonstrate it on the record. But sometimes it's not always wise. You know, I don't I don't initially just come out trying to challenge jurisdiction. What I would advise people to do is try to reach some sort of conclusion to the matter. And when they're not honoring that matter, that's when you start clowning them. Let me tell you something. When you ask them that question, it's going to clown them every time. It doesn't even matter if they sitting somewhere in a group right now um, watching this in a class, you know, trying to teach their uh, judges something on how to get around something. One of the things you can't get around is the truth. OK, and they are supposed to be operating under the Constitution for the United States of America. There's only three jurisdictions. That's common law, equity and admiralty. OK, those are supposed to be reserved for an Article three court. But we know in the Article one, Section eight, Clause nine, that Article one courts can establish court, a court system as well. They can institute tribunals that are inferior to the Supreme Court. We know we have separation of powers. So they, the uh, Article I court cannot be uh, operate, uh, exercising the same powers that Article III court is operating under. Okay, so we need to understand well, what is the distinct difference between these two courts. And I need to know which one I'm in. That's a, pre that's a legitimate question. Anybody doesn't believe me, you go out there and you start asking these questions in court and see what kind of answers you're going to get. That's when you're, you're gonna, your eyes are going to get open and you're going to begin to see that they're hiding something from you. Does anybody have any? 
Does anybody have any insight on the question? I Y'all just ask questions when somebody's talking and shit. Like a nigga supposed to stop fucking talking about what he's talking about and ask, ask your question. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? Pay for a consultation. God damn. You know, you see me sitting here fucking talking. He's a, I feel the letter. I filed a letter to the court informed the court of me being the general executive of my state. I don't even know what the fuck that is. I don't, come, I'm, I don't come over here and teach executorship and all that shit. Why the fuck are you asking me? I ain't never told you to say I'm an executor of my state. <laughs> you know, and the judge brought me to court based on a letter I wrote and made everyone leave the court. Belligerence is necessary. I don't know. Why are you asking me that? That's not what, I don't teach that. You go in there and you can say I'm a trustee. I'm the trustee or I'm, I'm sorry, I'm the beneficiary and I'm appointing you as the trustee. I don't know why y'all do this executor stuff. You know, it's that David Clarence type stuff. David Clarence is the one who brought out that I'm the executor of the estate. So you need to go over into his camp and ask them those questions, not me. Just saying. Even though on SBC University, we do have all the executor letters over there. You know, people come in and say, I'm the executor of the estate. All right. I, I mean, why? And then, then you just press me to an, ask, answer the question. I'm like, what, you know, what does that got to do with me? And you watch my video. I, you can tell when somebody come to a channel and don't watch no videos. Don't watch no video. Just start asking questions. You got a whole bunch of videos and watch none of them. You know, they're trying to figure out does somebody, you, y'all automatically assume people are all teaching the same thing. I've been doing this 15 years, man. I know all that information. I know where the information came from. Who started it? <laughs> you know, why y'all just be keep regurgitating it? You know, I was there when it started. Y'all just keep regurgitating stuff. You know, why are you talking about, you watch all my videos, what are you talking about? I went in and said, I'm the executive of the estate. When have you ever seen me to come, you know, any of my videos telling you to come in and say, I'm going to court and say, I'm the executor of the estate. You ain't never seen that. And so, I don't understand. You know, you file a letter saying you're the executive of the state. You start talking about, you know, a, a, a letter of rogatory, which is a letter of instruction. So I just bring that up. I'm not trying to go off on nobody, but I just, I have to point that stuff out because it's like, you know, when y'all like pressing me to answer a question, like I'm ignoring your question. I'm sitting here talking about something, which is rude. Like I'm going to start talking about, I already had a topic I'm going to talk about. And that's just it. You know what I'm saying? People who find different, you know, the thing about all of this is certain principles that you just got to learn. You know, you got all these people talking about all this different stuff out here. The executor of the estate, uh, appointing the judge as the trustee, uh, going in challenging jurisdiction, uh, you know, claiming your nationality, we under a treaty and all of this kind of stuff. But there is a basic principle to all of it. It's just a basic principle. It's public and private. And that's why I wanted to talk about ju uh, jurisdiction because you're claiming, you want to go in and claim jur uh, challenge jurisdiction, but you got a social security number or you got a job you work at or using, you got, you know, you got a bank account open with that social security number. You are, uh, you are, uh, you know, you got your children in school under a social security number. And then you go in there and what, because what's happening is the reason you're being brought into an Article One administrative court is because you're a U.S. citizen. And a U.S. citizen, and so you coming in and you challenging jurisdiction. It just doesn't, it it doesn't, it doesn't look like you know. It's like okay, well they looking at this all caps name on this piece of paper, and then they looking at you, and they got all your information up here and everything you've been doing all your entire life. You've been acting like you're a U.S. citizen, accepting benefits and privileges from the government, and now all of a sudden you want to come in here and you want to challenge jurisdiction, and you think you're going to get some sort of um, mileage doing that which you do have the grounds to do it because it is artificial persons in there and so forth, but you've been acting like the surety for this for the longest. And, and all they're looking for is performance on it. You know, so you challenge the, the jurisdiction when they want you to sign the check. They only just look at you to sign the check. You know, where is the indictment? Can I get the, uh, the, can I get the matrix of the indictment? Matrix means the original. Can I get the original copy of the indictment presented to me? And then, and then you can autograph it. They ain't going to want to give it to you, but they're going to act like they don't want to give it to you. But you request it. You got a right to inspect, you know, 
any paperwork that's been filed against you. They have to account for the original. Don't forget filing a motion. Filing a motion is a Forty acres and a mule. How this one do you think? Do a class on quiet title. I mean, you can just file a quiet title motion. I mean, they got plenty of motions out there for quiet title. You know, when you're talking about quiet title on real estate, I mean, you can file a quiet title action to give you a basis for it, you know? A lot of that stuff in real estate, they're going to give y'all a hard time. I'm going to tell you straight up. You're going to have a hard time because real estate is the key to freedom. It's the doorway to freedom. If everybody in America had their houses paid off, we wouldn't be having no problems because, you know, it's food, shelter, you know, food, shelter, clothing. Those are the three necessities of life. And the, one of the main ones is having you a, you know, a roof over your head. And everybody just had a roof over their head and they didn't have to pay for anything. There wouldn't be a lot of stress in the world. <laughs> so everybody just had a place to stay and didn't have any bills to pay on it. So they understand. I went through a lot with them on that. I can see it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what type of information comes out against the banks and the government. You, they can be totally exposed, totally, totally exposed for the entire world to see. And they, they, I don't think they would change anything. They keep it primarily because the people are such sheep, too, because the people just go along with everything. They just go along with it, man. I've been watching it. I've just been watching people for a long. Look at what's happening. I had to bring up this thing with. They came out with flu, Flurona and shit. And they just come out and just say anything. These people just roll with it. And that's how it is. The majority is always going to roll with it no matter what. They're going to roll with it. And they know that. Let's see, I have a land padding for my property. I can set up a consultation with you. Yeah, you can. Uh, you can... Uh, $250 per hour, uh, cash app, dollar sign, use of underscore, um, no, use of L19, and put your phone number in. Can you, can, can and using the right of religion help in a matter of jurisdiction? No, because it's not, okay, when you're dealing with, when you're dealing with an administrative court, it's a corporate, it's the jurisdiction and you're not in a, um, you're not in a uh, um, an equity court or anything like that. You you in you in an administrative court, and the issue is not your status or your belief in between God. The issue is whether or not there you're going to perform on a debt where there is a uh, presumed contract in existence. And the reason I say it's a presumed contract because it's not a, an express contract; it's an implied contract due to your actions in the public, how you've been acting driving a car, you know, with a driver's license, um, you know, bank account. Then you want to bring your religion in. And that's what the Ashwander rule is all about. The Ashwander rules are there to stop you from trying to, um, uh, be, from having your cake and eat it too. You've been taking benefits and privileges from the government and now you want to challenge the jurisdiction of the government. And th that's what the Ashwander rules stop, those seven rules. Stop you from doing that. That's what that was all about. That's why you're either all right or you're not right at all. You're either all right or you're not right at all. You got to be on the right or the left. You can't sit on the fence as it says in the Bible, I'll spew you out of my mouth. I'm gonna vomit, vomit, you're going to get vomited out of the mouth if you try to ride the fence. You got to either be all right or all, all private or all public. I'm challenging jurisdiction with a police officer, a better idea, not right away, but with question. I mean, you know, you can always challenge jurisdiction, you know, at any point, uh, subject matter jurisdiction can be challenged. I mean, but I try to resolve the issue first by, you know, by going to peace with them and trying to just say, you know, because what they're trying to get you to do is uh, come off, come off of Federal Reserve notes. But there's no law anywhere that says you have to pay with Federal Reserve notes. They can't and they can't they can't make you pay with Federal Reserve notes because that is going against public policy. And anytime you get in a situation where somebody's trying to make you pay with Federal Reserve notes and they work for the public, you just simply say, you know, um, 
uh, I'm sorry not to understand you're willfully violating public policy by sitting there trying to make me um, satisfy this obligation with Federal Reserve notes. When it's my understanding, you know, I can use any negotiable instrument. This is why we are using the UCC, because everything is debt currency in the public. It's not money. Peace to God's question. Can I join the university and learn the information you teach? Though I'm dealing in the UK, yes, you can. The UK has the UCC too. I just talked about that yesterday. Um, if you don't need contract contract with police officers. No, there's an implied contract when you got a driver's license that's in existence. People in California, you should read your um, driver's license application. Okay, he said, you're misleading people, bro. Okay, Alex Davison. He says, I'm misleading people. Okay, so educate us first and foremost. And then I'm going to just cut, and then I'm just going to cut everything up that you're saying. I need a good challenge right now. He said, I'm misleading people. I think you were the person that posted something on my other post and everything. You got my attention now. You say I'm misleading people. No, I'm educating people. You don't have very good comprehension, bro. <laughs> you don't con you on it. You don't have good comp comprehension, bro. Alex, you just got in the game, man. You need to shut up and listen. You don't know what you're talking about. I ain't even heard what you're gonna say, but I already know you don't they'll say it just because you use the word bro. You know, you're saying you're misleading people, bro. As soon as they come in negative like that, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, I, well, I care too. I care too. And I'm telling you, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I'll give you a mic. Uh, so what? You applied to the court. Many people have. So what the fuck? What does that mean? I did too. So what? There's a ton of people that have applied in court, have doing applied stuff in court that have worked. So, you know, what are you talking about? <laughs> give me your, give me your spiel. I guarantee you I've heard it before. I got, as soon as they start talking, about, I got, what is the word remedy is? What's a remedy? But it's only one word. Well, how do you get a remedy? How do you get a remedy in court? You Can you tell me in one word what a remedy is? What is a remedy? A remedy is a right. Okay, so how do you enforce a right in court as a private individual? What right are you enforcing? Oh, I'm gonna wait for him. I'm gonna wait for him to get the answer. Because they like to talk like they know. It's a contract. See, you're talking about notary. It's a con. Thank you, sir, sir. It's a contract. Rights are enforced through contracts. They're enforced through contracts. You have to have a contract. So you sitting here talking about I'm misleading people, and in the first five minutes, I'm already looking at you, and I'm already seeing real quick that you don't know what you're talking about. An in-camera proceeding is, is in, in chambers. It's private, off the record. I can't believe this dude is sitting there saying this. Oh, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. I do know what I'm talking about because I know the difference between public and private, and you don't. Not 90% of y'all don't. I just start talking and shit. The BC is not applied. Man, shut up, man. Y'all need to stop this shit. Talking about the DC, BC is not applied. Whatever, man. <laughs> Whatever. You know what I'm saying? The BC is not. What you going to talk about? You're the eight. You're the registered agent. You're going to come up with that right now? You're the registered agent? Let me see what, what you're going to come out of the registered agent. What information he got. So why give your energy to distractions? Distra I don't know. I, I, no, you got. I'm gonna give them an opportunity, and I like to give them an opportunity. It's a lesson. Don't get me mad. I don't give a fuck about getting you mad, nigga. Get mad, shit. Let's see. Uh, the referee screwed Dallas last night. Man, let me tell you something, man. I'm just through with the Dallas Cowboys, man. Dak Prescott. You know the refs did screw him, but man, they played. They just played soft, man, last night, man. It, 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 you know, it was, they played like shit first three quarters. You know, the refs was fucking them up. They was all, having them all them unnecessary penalties and all that kind of stuff. But, man, 
I don't know what to say, man. D Dallas Cowboys, they messed up, man. When they fired Jimmy Johnson, they put us under a curse. That put us under a curse, man. Firing Jimmy Johnson, that was the most bonehead. I, you know, when that shit happened, you know, I, nobody could believe it, and we haven't been right since. Could it be so-called name is just a transmitting utility, not necessarily to be identification? What could it be the so-called name? I don't know what you're talking about right there. Let's see. And who is in, ain't nobody said the BC is the remedy, dumbass nigga. What are you talking about? Who's in here talking about the BC is the remedy? Y'all stupid, man. Nobody said the BC is the remedy. <laughs> we just said contracts are the remedy. You don't even understand. And that right there goes to show you don't know how to, you don't understand secure party. Financial statement is the remedy. Oh my goodness. Let me get you off. Okay. Can you please answer a simple question for me? Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, simple question, Neo. His IP address is blocked. He's trolling. Oh, he blocked his... Yeah, I know he's trolling and shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and uh, block him and shit. Let me go ahead and kick him off. I'm going to go ahead and kick him off and shit. They think that... They be thinking you can't block him. You can block him. You can block him. So what's the question? Can't can't move in public and private also as Federal Reserve. Also, it's a Federal Reserve system. So wouldn't the government then be traitors as their job is to protect the right? No, they're not traitors because you don't understand Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 or the plenary power doctrine. Are they traitors? They doing all this under the plenary power doctrine and separation of powers. They not, they not, they have not committed any, they have not committed any treason, and they have the full voluntary compliance of all the American people. All the American people have complied with all of this and due to their own ignorance. The remedy is read everything and, you know, the remedy, you know, I'm not sure. As soon as you see them say that word remedy, you know they come from, as soon as, you know, it's that group that say, I got the remedy group. I got the remedy. <laughs> as soon as you see that shit right there, run from them. I got the remedy. They selling rem they pedal remedies. They remedy peddlers and everything. I got the remedy. Can you please drop the information where I can reach you, my brother, to pay for a service I need? Yes, I am someone who just cash at me at dollar sign use of L19. Put your phone number in the uh, notation and I, con I contact you. I charge $250 an hour for consultation. All right, plus the military. Yep, Jimmy Johnson. Let's see. What is the deal of the 1099A and 1041? I don't know. Go ask your CPA. Remedy is UCC. You're the one preaching. <laughs> Y'all see what this nigga's talking about? I wouldn't challenge jurisdiction. I would demand proof of their status, nationality, as well as any binding contracts to rescind on the record. I mean, you could do that. I mean, but before you do that, you're already, a, you're presuming that, um, you're presuming a jurisdiction. That's why I'm always telling you to go in there and ask the question the certain way. See, you're saying, where are the contracts? Well, I'm not going to ask them for any contracts right off. All right? I'm going to determine what the jurisdiction is they're operating in first before I do that. And that's why you say, is this common law? Or is this, uh, is this admiralty? Is it a colorable admiralty jurisdiction that constitutes a condition of contract under criminal aspects of a colorable admiralty jurisdiction? I, if it's admiralty, now you made that determination. Now I'm going to ask you for the contract. But I'm going to wait for them to tell me what jurisdiction they're operating under, and they're not going to tell me. Too many of you, y'all go in and y'all make conclusions of law on your own. All right. And anything you say can and will be used against you. You need a clarification of the court. That's the judge's responsibility to reveal what jurisdiction the court is operating under. They used to make the announcements and all of the court pot paperwork, and they don't do that anymore. So before I ask them if there's a contract, I'm going to say, can you please help me out if I do not understand? Wait a minute, can you please help me out? You must be talking to the judge. Are, are not the people the creditors of the USA? Yeah, they are. We out here for truth, and you're a very, and you're very, very close, my man. 
So you got the truth is basically what you're saying. <laughs> you got it. I, how would you go about challenging jurisdiction and traffic court and getting the tickets dismissed? Do you recommend being a recorder? No, I recommend you read um, Abatement at Common Law by Don Quixote. You get on the internet and Google it right now. Study that administrative process and, uh, and understand that memorandum of law on the right to travel. What if you are a smart person and you think someone is spreading misinfo, then why would you continue listening and participating unless you are a troll or agent? I agree with that 100% Why you're here. Uh, let's see. Allegedly, the folks are incapable of doing the so-called homework, participating on the merit getting grants jurisdiction. Well, that's what a uh, um, look up the definition of a public figure in a Black's Law Dictionary. Look up the definition of public figure. Well, shoot. Regardless, of the jurisdiction, the contract prevails. Correct? No, if not, not if it's common law. I mean, the, the jury, if there's a jurisdiction, if, if, if this, if it's based off of some form of contract, if it is based off of some form of contract, then what kind of contract is it? Is it, an, is it, a, is it an implied contract or an express contract? Because see, now you're asking them to pro pro provide a contract and contracts don't have to be in writing. Contracts are implied. And that's what a minimum contact is. A minimum contact is a contract you've entered into the government because you've come into their jurisdiction and had some sort of contact with them commercially. They're losing the registered mail post lately is disappearing from the USPS website, right? Class is the night, Sixth Amendment, true. Question, I'm paraphrasing, but a while back you said that you shouldn't taint your trust by putting Federal Reserve notes in it because then you risk bringing it in the public. Can you explain that? Well, first of all, I didn't say that. That comes out of a, um, what document that comes out of? That comes out of, um, that comes out of, uh, I think it was Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, the Nature of the Remedy where he says that putting Federal Reserve notes in it. But yeah, you put Federal Reserve notes in, in there. I mean, it's, yeah, you put Federal Reserve notes in a trust. Federal Reserve notes belong to the Federal Reserve. They have a right to tax it. I mean, it's common fucking sense. What the fuck you don't understand? Federal Reserve note is like what Jesus said. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto the Lord what is the Lord's. Federal Reserve notes belong to the Federal Reserve. They don't give a fuck what you think about it. They can tell you what to do with it. Just like if it was my money with my name on it. If you try to tell me that I couldn't tax my own money, I'll pull a gun on your fucking ass too. You're going to listen to all these stupid ass people on here and everything try to tell you something different. They idiots. They idiots like a mother. They were running around telling you, oh, I got a private trust. I ain't got to pay taxes and shit like that. They, they don't get you fucked up. They stupid. They don't know what they're talking. They definitely don't know what they're talking about. You if I can you stay to issue something to you without you without your permission or knowledge in order to change your status example. Never had a license here, but somehow was issued a ticket drive without suspended license. I don't know. You gotta address that when you go into court. Once again, go to Don Quixote's abatement of common law and have it abated. What do you mean how they could do anything they want to? It's up to you to uh uh to to counteract it. So you need to write the letter of judge and everybody in there and get it dismissed. If you were brought into a traffic court via telephone and the judge hung up on you as soon as you asked her a question regarding your guaranteed rights, what would you do? What would I do? I mean, I don't know. You depend on the situation. I mean, if they hung up on you, what are you, what can you do? They hung up on you. <laughs> you write a letter to the court, make sure you had a stenographer there, make sure you had some sort of recording or something like that, that's the first thing you need to do is try to obtain a, a stenographic record of the proceeding. That's the, that's the first thing I would t attempt to do. Try to get a recording, uh, a stenographic record of the proceeding. Underneath the contract, there will always be a trust as a matter of property law, as long as the legal owner of certain properties entitled to less than a whole beneficial ownership of it. Underneath a contract, there will always be a trust as a matter of property law as long as the legal owner of certain properties entitled to let... I don't even understand that. You know what I'm saying? I like to talk about. Why not focus on trust anymore? I do focus on trust. 
Neil needs to go ahead and ask his damn question. Why does he keep asking if he can ask a question? I know, just write the damn question. Is an assessment to handle those taxes? It is an assessment. I don't know what that is. Brother just asked a question. Seems like you and I, Akeem, have been Jay Z and Drake each other the past few months. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't, you don't have any rights if you don't know them, okay. Traffic Court, the vehicle registration name title is owned by principal agent. Prosecutor holds that standing. That's where the liability is. The court is asking you to co-sign for, for entertainment. Do you give child support consults? Yes. Yusufel, you speak on a lot of things. Okay, nothing she gave up. Truth needs no defender. Strict. When the public service asks a question, the first response you should say out of your pie hole will determine the outcome. Court is over Zoom now in democratic states. Yeah, most are. Neo stuck in the matrix somewhere. Uh, can I press traffic court for charging me like I had a license and I never had one, even though I was ignorant to the law at that point. Yeah, of course. Why, why, you know, if you never had a license, you know, but it, the thing they're going to, you know, you and you saying you wasn't using the, uh, the public uh, roads for private profit or gain, you know, and you signed your ticket UCC 1-308. That is what you want to do. Greetings, brother. Not trying to get off subject, but can I A for V a lease contract when a company won't provide an invoice? A lease contract, you don't own it. I don't, you don't have any ownership interest in it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I wouldn't say so. I mean, you don't pay them. Okay, if you don't, and you say, you can do whatever you want to do, but, you know, discharging debt is for the government. HGR 192, June 5th, 1933, don't talk about no lease contracts. But even though you should, technically you should be able to do it, but I don't think it's going to work in a situation like that where you leasing something. I don't think it's going to work. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's going to work on something like that. And to tell you the truth, the only thing that is really going to work on is something that you got possession of and you can fight for, like when you uh, have a mortgage on a home or some type of loan on a car or something like that, or maybe some credit cards or something like that. Y'all be trying to be creative. Hey, I mean, my thing is this. Try it and see. I don't know. Really, to tell you the truth, at the end of the day, I don't know what'll work and what won't work. I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to tell you, uh, it's not meant for that purpose. She, they call them negotiable instruments. You're negotiating them. Should you do an administrative process in criminal court if you are not a secure party creditor? You should always do an administrative process. Administrative process don't have nothing to do with being a secure party creditor. Nothing. Damn, judge is hanging up the phone. What's the remedy to get rid of probation? Read uh, Gene Keating's prison treaties. Question. I'm, I'm eight hours ahead of your time, and I would like to join SBC University on live classes recorded. I mean, classes Monday through Friday, I mean, Monday through Thursday from 9 to 11, Eastern Standard Time in America. Classes are recorded. Yes. And they are put up in the archive section for so people can rewatch them. Is it always best to hire your own court reporter ahead of depending on a judge? Yeah, I would suggest it. You're supposed to go and get, you know, like here in, De in Atlanta, Fulton County, the court reporters are downstairs. You can go into the courtroom early and go downstairs and ask one to come up with you up to court. You know, different courts have their own different things. First thing I would look to see where the uh, judges got their court reporters at. Court reporters are always in the courtroom around there somewhere, but you should uh, make arrangements to have a court reporter before you get to court. When I asked the, when I asked the judge if it were on the record in telephone court, she hung up on me, and the next day the clerk sent me a bill for the charge. How would you handle this? Get a record of the proceedings. First of all, see if you're telling the truth, because that don't even sound right. If you was in a consultation with me, I'd ask you to see, let me see, let me see the co a copy of it. Because I had judges and hang up the phone. I know that shit didn't happen just like that. 
When you register your car, you are entering into a trust. You are a trustee. Yeah, say that. Got it. I guess I'm confused about the trust having Federal Reserve notes as an asset. I mean, you just talk. That's a tax question. It's a tax question. You put Federal Reserve notes in a trust. Do you are they taxable or not? <laughs> That's the thing. You got to report it. Is it is it reporting? Signature and medallion signature guarantee. Yeah, the medallion stamps are a bank guarantee. No, you would not challenge it. Ideally, you would better have a private process already performed for discharge and it's set off. Yeah, got a thing. Did you like the new Matrix movie? No, I hated that shit. I haven't even watched it all. I can't even get through it all the way. Uh, what do you think about filing a case in a chancery court for a trust to be able to enforce violations to it? I mean, well, that's where that's the only place you're going to have anything with a trust. A trust is a right solely enforceable in equity. Chancery courts are equity courts. I guess that's a trick question. I have a friend in prison. Would you prepare a court, the court documents for him? No. Um, could your post? Could you post this for me? I don't. I don't do no paperwork for nobody. How can you exercise HR 182 and not be a U.S. citizen? All right, because it's a it's an agreement with the private citizens because they had they took they took gold and silver from private people and. You are not a U.S. citizen. Your straw man is a U.S. citizen. That's why it's called a transmitting utility. It's a bridge from the public and the private. You got to get your mind right and understand that all caps name is not you. That is that is what the government is interacting with. Not you. Yusuf, sometimes I wonder if it is better to strive to live privately or to strive to move smarter commercially. I do both. Uh, Yusuf, you stated my general executive letter wasn't the right way. I didn't say it was the right way. I said I didn't teach it. Don't come ask me questions about something I ain't teach. Isn't ACR 182 a benefit? Uh, it is an exercise and a benefit. It's a benefit of setting off debt. If you're in the public, it is exercise and a benefit. It's a public policy of the government. For you, but they had to give you something because there ain't no money. There's no money. They had, it was equitable remedy because they took something from you. They had to give you something back. Status and standing who has it in their courts, the state or man. I don't know what you have. I don't know what a, what is a far right. I don't know what a freedom of, I don't know what a far right is. Status and standing who has it in courts is you have standing as a man and you need, and you know your status. I don't understand that question. Whether you do you have any information about the deal Mr. MLK made with the federal government? No, I don't know. I was not there. Would you like, uh, uh, what would you do if judges denies motion to dismiss for subject matter jurisdiction? Find out what the reason was. I mean, when you asked me that question, what was the reason it got denied? <laughs> I don't know what I would do because I don't know the reason it got denied. When a negotiable instrument is issued for debt, can you still maintain the relationship or would you typically refuse to do further business? They're probably going to refuse to do further business with you. Federal debt notes are legal, not law. If you discharge the debt, what other type of business do y'all have to conduct with each other? That matter's closed. Where could I read about the proper way to, to use credit authorization once I have a bond on file with the Treasury Department, kind of SBC University? About to go do all my bank accounts next. Okay, use of my birth certificate, surety name is not the same name as I use as a grown up in the public on my driver's license, social security card. You put what's on the uh, birth certificate. The birth certificate is the foundational document for all identification. Peace to the guys. How are CPNs obtained? And would it be in your five-star up move list? I would definitely get a CPN, and you need to find somebody who issues that. I don't do CPNs. Um, ignored right. I I ain't ignored anything. I ain't see right not to. Intelligent. You know they are grimy by not allowing recording devices inside. The feds don't. The feds don't. They're not grimy. It's just that it ain't what you think it is. That should like that let you know it's not what you think it is. So I was born Sean One. Then my name was changed when I was seven. I'm now 33 and have been charged in court yet. It is my legal entity and not my born name. Well, so you had your name legally changed. What do you mean? You changed your name in the system. All right. It's like change your name from McDonald's to Burger King. So what? What? Do you, what? Do you, what? I don't understand. What? 
Are you reasoning that something is different? Is a bill of particulars needed to ask for judicial review? No, you don't need a bill of particulars to ask for judicial review. What does a bill of particulars have for judicial review? You're using a bill of particulars to, for them to determine something or to outline something for you, such as the nature of an action or something like that. I guess that was a trick question. Register vehicle makes you uh, makes you the user liabilities would fall on the state. Okay. I think I found a way to get probation handled. You fail. I send you a process on Facebook Nation. Okay, I'll look at it. What would you do if judges denies motion to dismiss for subject matter jurisdiction? I just told you, I just asked the question, what, what was the reason that they dismissed it for subject matter jurisdiction? What was it? <laughs> well, what, you know, what are they saying? You know, they saying that they have jurisdiction or you didn't raise a good point. What was your reason for saying they didn't have subject matter jurisdiction? For instance, I, I'll, 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 I'll take time to answer that. All right. In a real estate case, okay, I'm going to determine whether or not the bank have subject matter, uh, for, for them, for the court to have subject matter jurisdiction, the bank needs to have standing and status to make a claim. And if they haven't determined it, if they don't have any, uh, any uh, uh, documentation that's been sworn to under penalty of perjury or any type of original documentation like the promissory note or anything like that, then how they how they they have to be a real party in interest with standing before the court in order for the court to have subject matter jurisdiction. So when I keep asking you what was the reason for them denying that, what was the issues you brought up that led to the fact that you telling the court they didn't have subject matter jurisdiction? Because there had to be some elements in place first for the court to have subject matter jurisdiction. If you challenge that, did you challenge it properly? Can you sue the court and judges for time wasting and call? You can sue anybody for anything. Can you share with me where I can get find a template for a bill in equity, creditors and their bond? But am I not separate from the one charge? I'm also the DBA for the other name doing business as. Yeah, I guess. Butchery, creditors and their bond. Use the thank you for your time. <laughs> a lot of people move like targets too. Can't always blame the cops. That's true. It is time that the corner get a rest. It is true that the coroner can arrest, the coroner can arrest, I guess you're trying to say coroner, can arrest the provost, marshal, or deputy. If so, what is the delegated authority and why do they have it over a sheriff? I don't know why you put marshal, provost, marshal, because in the dictionary it says that the coroner can arrest the sheriff. He has authority over the sheriff. I don't know the delegated authority behind that, but you got that out of Black's Law Dictionary. Anybody looks up the dictionary, look up coroner, You'll see, let me read it for you. I was doing research. Um, I When I was first got into this, you know, people trying to say that we dead and all that kind of stuff right there. So that led to a lot of research into the coroner and the coroner allegedly, the coroner is where they keep the um, a lot of vital statistics information is at the coroner's office. My understanding was that this, this this information he's talking about that come from like about ten years ago. Um, what is it, real quick? You go to Black's Law Dictionary. I ain't read definition of coroner in a long time, but the coroner can arrest the sheriff. Yes, he can. Coroner. He forms a check on the sheriff, which was weird to me. I was like, why, why the coroner? You know, I always wondered that. I said, why can why does the coroner have the authority to get the sheriff? And if you go to coroner, the form, see coroner, let's see, coroner right here. Let's read about coroner real quick. I think it's important. Coroner, a public official whose duty is to investigate the cause and circumstances of any death that occurs suddenly, suspiciously, or violently. Coroners are medical examiners. In history, a royal official with countywide jurisdiction to investigate deaths, to hold inquests, and to assume the duties of the sheriff if need be. The coroner acted as a check on the sheriff, a local officer whose growing power threatened royal control over the counties. The coroner reported criminal activity to the King's justices in Irie. When the Irie court arrived in a county, 
They collected the coroner's roll to learn what had occurred in the county during the IRA's absence. The justices find the coroner if he failed to produce the roll or if they learned of criminal activity in the county from a source other than the roll. The office of the coroner was established in September 1194 when the justices in Irie uh, were required to see that three knights and one clerk were elected in every county as keepers of the pleas of the crown. These were the first county coroners. Throughout the Middle Ages, the coroner could be ordered to perform almost any duty of an administrative or inquisitorial nature within this uh, bailiwick, either alone or with the sheriff. But there were other duties which belonged more specifically to his office and which he performed without being ordered. This consisted of holding inquests upon dead bodies, receiving adjur uh, adjurations of the realm made by felons in sanctuary, hearing appeals, confessions of felons, and appeals of approvers, and attending and sometimes organizing exactions and outlawries promulgated in the county court. These were the crown pleas which the coroner had to keep. I hadn't read that in a while. I had to read that again. But that's where that came from, y'all. He started talking about you know, he said the marshal. I ain't never read where the uh, coroner can arrest the marshal. You know, but it's like he formed a check on the sheriff. Just had to give that to y'all. You know, people break, uh, just put something out there. But it was interesting when I was reading this. Let me remember what I was investigating. I was investigating this because in federal court, when, when you're on probation and they violate you for probation, um, it's a deed. It's a deed. And um, it's like a foreclosure. It's like they're taking you to a foreclosure action. They're foreclosing on some property and they're seizing the property. Um, and this kind of led to this coroner report and some other information, you know, that I had. I was researching this. And, and, it's a, and that's why I'm pausing right now to talk about it, because it was very important, because I did see some stuff in federal paperwork that um, first and foremost, lets me know that it is in the nature of some sort of, um, it's, got, it's called the statute merchant. The statute merchant in sense two talks about um, the commercial bond. They put commercial bonds in all of these federal cases. And you got to start looking at the action. When you look at the paperwork that they put it in, if you don't know anything about history, you won't really see what it is because they're doing the same thing they've always done for like the last 400 years, but they've changed the look of it and they changed a lot of terms and you got it. And that's what, and that's where they get you it, it, to do this information. You got to study history. You got to study the history of the Admiralty courts and of the common law courts. And that's why it's very important for you to read something like clerk's praxis. You ain't gonna never see it. If you don't know history, you know, if you don't know history, you're not, you're not going to see, it. you don't know what you're looking at. You have a, a brief synopsis on exactly how hypothecation works for my benefit and what it provides in financial security. How when they hypothecate um, instruments and everything, that's not in the scope of what we're talking about right now. So I don't understand how that's germane to this conversation. But unless you're talking about like with birth certificates and things of that nature, but no, I don't know how they do everything because I'm not behind the scenes. But it should be common sense because there isn't any money and all the money in circulation is debt money. You have to create a debt to have money. You, you need a debt to create money. <laughs> it should be simple. You need debt. We are in a debt-based system. Yes, I'm reading a book called Lies. My teacher taught me as far as it's really good. Read to comprehend full moon madness. Can you recommend a CPM website? Free debt, free debt. Um, what is it? Debtfreeanswer.com. 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 The constable or bondsman secures the collateral, which is you. Yeah, they got something called like a body execution. You could look that up, but you're only there uh, getting paid regularly, which is you, but only if they're getting paid regularly. Yeah, it is. The statue merchant goes back to Edward, yeah, Edward the First. It does. Read the second sense of the word. 
Peace to the gods. What is today's topic? I don't know. History, bond, main prize, trust. The funny part is millions of dollars are shredded by the reserve and used for compost. What is the constitutionality of closed courts under the guise of confidentiality of a child? I mean, y'all, y'all, let me add, answer that real quick. Y'all always like to use this word constitution, and then you ain't even read the constitution. You don't even know how the constitution works. Y'all be telling these people, are they doing something constitutionally? You don't even know the principles, the seven principles of the Constitution. You know, if you don't know those things, how y'all going to question the constitutionality of something? They're not doing anything unconstitutional. You, If you are a U.S. citizen and you are using Federal Reserve notes and you have a Social Security number and you and you are doing all of that, they're not doing anything unconstitutional. You are volunteer. You have voluntarily giving up your status in a Republican form of government to operate in a democratic um, welfare system where you looked at as some sort of dependent or some sort of property. Basically, where they're going to do what they want to do to you. And the authority that they get from that is Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 of the Constitution. And the power is called plenary power doctrine. Plenary power doctrine. Is separation of powers and the exercise and plenary power doctrine. And the courts, which are legislative courts, fall with under that purview. On the flip side, most government and law enforcement also don't understand the Constitution. It's a pandemic of ignorance. Now, they don't have to because they follow procedures. The procedures are put in place to make sure there aren't any constitutional violations. So all police officers and our sheriff deputies and all them, what they got to do is to follow procedure. The procedures are put in place if they follow them to the letter, there will not be any constitutional violation. So, yeah, they don't need to know the Constitution. They just need to do what they're told to do. The Constitution Foundation for Contracts, namely Remedy. Now, let me understand that. I guess a better question, why do you think the Constitution has anything to do with you? Yeah, the Constitution don't have anything to do with you. The Constitution forms government and restrains government. Constitution is for them. It wasn't for you. Your rights are private. Your, your rights come from God. Your rights have always, are, always been in existence. You have substantive rights. You have constitutionally protected rights. It's to protect you from the government, from government encroachment. And that's why when the government, if they need to come in your home, they have to get a what? They have to get a warrant first. All right. To, from, to come in from the public into the private, they have to have what's called a compelling public interest. They have something called a compelling public interest test. So, you know, you get, you got, you know, it's public and private. All of it is public and private. Like I said, if you listen to guys, they don't know public and private. They can sound intelligent all they want. They don't have the fundamentals down. So they, they're always going to be off base. They're always going to be off base. I don't know public and private. Because they question things like, you know, can I put money in a trust? You know, are we talking about a private trust? How do you prove that we have God-given rights? How do you prove that we have God-given rights? Well, a right is a contract. It's going to be proved by a contract. You have to have a contract enforced in the courts. So your rights come through your right to contract unlimited. I got that out of a mil military document. It said private people, they have rights, but their rights have to be in the form of a contract. That's why you see people accepting the Constitution, right, and the government, where they'll do an acceptance of the contract that you have with the president and his oath of office and things of that nature because you have to have a contract. You have to be in writing. I was called a sovereign citizen based on, in, on me informing the court of my estate. Okay. Informing the court of your estate. All right, I'm not sure, you know, why don't you just talk in regular talk? Use veil does the remedy for injury to man by the statutory system belong to U.S. Treasury? Yeah, in a commercial system. And when you start studying admiralty, that's how all remedies were. All remedies were monetary. All you have to do is just go look up penal action. Just read definition under penal action. I'll answer your question right there. It's called a penal action. When admiralty, you did a crime, your remedy was something monetary, some sort of... Um, Gold, you had to pay gold. And if you couldn't pay, they put you in prison. It's debtor's prison. 
The statutory that you have a you have a debtor's prison today. The statutes are bonds of record. They rec, rec, uh, uh, represent amounts that the elite is charging you for for violating one of their for one, violating one of their statutory codes. But it's it's creditor and debtor all the way. So yeah, it's with the treasury because if it's a debt that they're claiming you owe, then you know you are absolved from that from having to pay a debt. Because the ACR 192 of June 5th, 1933. And if you want to see who the uh, the point men are for that, then read the Federal Reserve Act. Control of the currency, um, the Secretary of Agriculture, and the Secretary of the Treasury. Where can we read about public and private? It's called Google. You can go right, you can go right now over to google and do it hey i'm live streaming i'm gonna hit you right back you have to go over to uh, go over to google i'm live streaming i did you right back yeah i'm losing weight I lost a lot of weight y'all see all the weight i'm losing in my face y'all i lost about 30 pounds so far i gotta lose another uh I'm just keeping it going, keeping it going. Yeah, but I'm I'm, I'm live streaming right now. I'm going to hit you back, man. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting skinny. You know, they leave it in your face first. You know, I've been running every every damn day, all day. I mean, man, I've been like on this uh, on this weight loss journey hard. For the man, okay, for the man that asked about probation, yes, you can get them to start contracting with you when you send them the proper paperwork. I would send them a W-9. That will be the first thing I'd send to probation because they claim you owe me money and they ain't reporting the taxes on it. That would be the first thing i start asking about um, reporting, uh, reporting. You know, I say, look, I got a duty to report my taxes on this. You know, I'm paying y'all this money, this $100 a month or whatever it is. Um, uh, you know, I'd like to request y'all give me y'all EIN number so I can report this on my, they're going to start trying to tell you, like, right, now you can't report that on your taxes, you know, and then you need to ask them, well, is there some sort of statute law code or something that you can show me that su supports what you just said that I don't have to, I can't, you know, I'm giving you, you just get, you have a right to get free money because it's a debt, it's a debt that they, it's a debt collection. Can you elaborate on how to push the issue in rent with risk management for an agent that may have damaged you. No, you need to call risk management and sit down and talk to them. It's different in every jurisdiction. Get on the phone, call risk management, have a discussion with them. They'll tell you everything you want to know. Is it possible to dispose of unlawful criminal charges while out of the country? Anything's possible. All praise be to the most high. Yes, you yes, you do look like you lost weight. Looking good. Yeah, I lost, I'm losing. Yeah, I lost a lot of weight. I've been running every day. Man. I'm doing them 20,000 steps a day. <sighs> You know, my face is, you know, I'm starting to, I'm pushing it, you know what I'm saying? Got to get it off this right here, though, man. It's right here, you know what I'm saying? You got to, it just like, it's stuck like, ah. So, you know, I've been pushing it every day to get that up off of me. Bank of Canada announced 500% increase in interest rates this year. How do you acknowledge the fact that you are an Article 4, Clause 3 citizen instead of being known as an interim citizen, 14th Amendment? I mean, that's what all the paperwork is for. I mean, you know, it's like this is all, you got a million people out there claiming, you know, status correction, giving a notice, giving them a notice, UCC 1-202. How do you acknowledge the fact that you are, yeah, UCC 1-202, the juice got you on a good work. Yeah, I know I've been juicing every day. How do you deal with a false risk protection order placed against you? Well, first of all, you say it's false. Anytime I, I any, I'm always put up on alert when somebody makes a determination that something was false. When like an attorney friend told me, he said, it's not about right or wrong in court. It's about what you can prove. So where are your facts to substantiate that it's false? And do you understand what a fact is? That'd be my first thing. My first question is, do you understand what a fact is? And if you do, where are your facts to substantiate? Where's your evidence? Because facts constitute evidence. 
Where's your evidence to substantiate that something fraudulent or something false was committed against you? Because that could just be how you feel about it. <laughs> you know, how you felt about the situation. You know, they told me in court, I was in court, and the motherfucker said, I stole a car. You know, I, this is why I call my federal case. And, 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 and Broad is in court. This is the prosecutor. She's in court saying, Your Honor, he stole uh, Mercedes Benz, blah, blah, blah. And I'm looking at my, 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 my attorney next to me. I said, say, man, I, I drove that car up here, man. The car is parked outside in the parking lot. I got the title to it. What the fuck is she talking about? And then they just looked at me like, that was a false statement. But because he didn't object to it, because that's what you should have done. You said, objection on a hearsay. Uh, we need someone who can come in and, and testify to the veracity and validity of the statements that the prosecutor is making because it's a fucking hearsay statement. But I didn't know that at the time. And I had this piece of shit sitting next to me. He didn't do shit to help me out. That's why the number one thing that people go back into court for who are in jail is insuff uh, insufficient assistance of counsel. Because the attorneys don't do shit for you and you don't know what to do. You don't know how to do a proper objection or nothing like that. They just sitting out there being quiet. This prosecutor saying whatever the fuck he want to say. He can say, you know, hey, you know, you had, you had 20 keys of cocaine. Like, man, what are you talking about? I just had a blunt. <laughs> they will embellish shit. Trust me. They'll embellish on your ass. Because they feel like they're getting you for all the shit that they didn't catch you doing. I heard that senator down in Florida say that shit. He said, why are you putting charges, false charges on people? He did this, but he didn't do all this other shit. And he said, we getting them for all the shit we didn't catch him doing. And you better believe that's how they think. When you see all that made up shit come on your shit, they feel like you've been doing crime. We, we just caught you on this. We didn't catch you on all this other shit that you've been doing. Once the SSN becomes a closed account, does it kill the distribution upon retirement? I don't know, man. I don't plan on getting no distribution from retirement. Why are you worried about that? You, if you're trying to stop, become private and stop taking benefits and privileges from the government, I don't have no plans on getting nothing. No, I have no plans of receiving no checks from the government. Nothing. Nothing. So I don't know. Court tricks and traps is good material. It is good for criminal cases against um the state is there an equivalent court survival guide i use court survival guide court survival guide is good i know you teach against entering the courts unless it is necessary but where should the people start when dealing with the i don't say i don't say uh i don't preach against entering the courts I, I'm just saying, try to stay out of court, stay out of stay, I live your life honorably and don't get in any type of uh, arguments with any, any, any controversy, stay out of controversy. If you got to go into court, you got to go into the courtroom. But I'm just, one of the rules is staying on at all costs and avoid public controversy. Stay out the courts means keep out of trouble, live your life honorably, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Don't do nothing to nobody you don't want done to yourself. Don't steal anything. Say, brother, I know you're trying to lose weight. I'm a former pro boxer, fought on TV and everything. Google me to qualify myself. Say, okay, if I hit you up with Instagram, can he help me with a weight? Okay, yeah, hit me up on Instagram. My Instagram is uh, Yusuf underscore E-L underscore one nine on Instagram. Y'all follow me on Instagram too, man. Y'all follow me on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, I'm going to start posting stuff on Instagram over there so yeah hit me up on instagram definitely money is controversially apparently comment law don't injure cause loss wrong yeah you know what i'm saying don't do anything don't get in don't 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 in that's the whole purpose of the common law you can do whatever you want as long as you don't mess with anybody's life liberty or property that's what you're supposed to be doing do you can do whatever you want as long as you don't fuck with somebody else's life liberty or property like the blacks dictionary definition of facts yeah yeah i know what a fact a fact is agreement a stipulation between two parties you know what the facts are if there's a material issue of fact then you got to go to a fact trier and that's a bench trial or a jury trial that those are called fact trier fact trying 
Well, they have to because you can't uh, you can't apply the law until you know what the facts are. The law has to be applied to a certain given set of facts that have appeared in a case. So before you go to law, we have to find out what the facts. That's why I say facts and law. If you use Federal Reserve notes and all, is that a minimum contact for jurisdiction? In my opinion, yes. Yes. Yes, sir, I don't know what the difference. Okay, feds can't indict you if you're trade if you trade in gold instead of Federal Reserve notes. <sighs> That's a good question. I don't see how they would do it because um, your know, all your transactions are in private. If you're dealing in gold, it's outside they stuff. George Catanza, it is not a lie if you believe it. <laughs> Yeah, it's not a lie. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good philosophical um, post. It's almost like if 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 a tree fell in the uh, forest and there was nobody there to see it, did it truly fall? You know, if a U.S. national can serve in the U.S. military and receive VA benefits, is VA disability different type of protected benefit? I don't know. You know, I don't know the answer to that. You know, all I know is benefits and privileges of the government. If you're receiving a benefit or a privilege, that's not a right. You're just using the word benefit and privilege, just using it. It's not, I know the difference between benefits and privileges and rights. You you don't have no entitlement to a, a benefit and a privilege can be taken from you. That's all that is. A right cannot. Can you, can you, retract a statement in court uh yeah i mean i mean the people take back in uh plea agreements so yeah the answer to that would be yeah you know they got statutory codes for that so i don't know but if you're talking about like if you lie in court or something like that i don't think you're gonna retract i don't know if they'll let you retract that statement they might ask you right there on the spot do you want to track that statement we got some information right here you get Federal Reserve notes for that goal. Yes, sir, I do know the difference between facts, law, and a crime. Someone has been creating emails in my ends legis threatening individuals. Okay. All right. Well, they have IP addresses where they can track that. Give unto Caesar, which is his, and give unto the Lord, which is his. Yeah. Why would the court excuse everyone in court, including the stenographer, based on a letter I wrote? Which is not on the record from the court because they don't want that they don't want the public to hear it. Am I entering a contract by passing the bar? Is this a court of record? I mean, people say that, you know, you cross over the bar into the court, that you know, you caught crossing over into their jurisdiction. Answer to this, is there no tree when there is nobody there? If you don't acknowledge it, it doesn't exist. If you don't acknowledge it, it doesn't exist. That's true. Trying to get into private, but have open loans in the public, but I can pay off at once. Is there a debt discharge comes in? I mean, you got open loans. Let's go get your CPN number. You know, y'all don't, y'all ain't got no imagination when it comes to things. You can see this. Is there anything I can read about appointing the judge as trustee except the judge Dale? Nope, because that's where it came from. Going to, going to court and try it, you'll see it's real. I haven't read anything any, anywhere else. All I know is that they created what's called a constructive trust. You can read that. And then they call you a trustee ex officio. So there's a trust situation. And I understand that there is a general principle of trust law that the trustee has all the liability. So it makes sense that you appoint him. If there's a trust, if there's a constructive trust, you don't want to be the trustee. Can I bring my own court reporter to close court if the court is already provided? I don't know. You do whatever you want to do. I don't know. Every court has their own rules. Uh, so I might be on to something if the overcharge to hope you uh, the overcharge to hope you copy, please true. Best book in your opinion on trust law. What is, it, uh, uh, what is that on trust? Um, I'm going to tell you the truth. If you want to study trust law, get American jurisprudence. Case law is the best thing to study on trust law. Reading cases. That's what I would say. Reading cases. 
And that, and if you want to read cases, get you an American jurisprudence. I would say American jurisprudence is the best thing. As some told in legal encyclopedia. Once the SSN and all the benefits is rescinded of the decedent's ends legis, would an injunction be the best document to put on the record for no further encroachments? Y'all like to use this word injunction so much. What is an injunction? Let's read an injunction, y'all. Let's see if they can put in an injunction. Let's read what an injunction is. An injunction. Y'all just be going through the dictionary and just make up shit. And I'm going to make a remedy and I'm going to call it an injunction. <laughs> an injunction. Injunction. A court order commanding or preventing an action. To get an injunction, the complainant must show that there is no plain, adequate, and complete remedy at law and that an irreparable injury will result unless the relief is granted. Another place to study injunctions would be American jurisprudence, definitely. Uh, in general, in a, in a general sense, every order of a court which commands or forbids is an injunction. But in an accepted legal sense, an injunction is a judicial process or mandate operating in personam by which, upon certain established principles of equity, a party is required to do or refrain from doing a particular thing. An injunction has also uh, been defined as a writ framed according to the circumstances of the case, commanding an act which the court regards as essential to justice or restraining an act which it esteems contrary to equity and good conscience. As a remedial writ, which courts issue for the purpose of enforcing their equity jurisdiction and as a writ issued by the order and under the seal of a court of equity. Now, I was reading all that to say, because people, I guess what they're trying to say is because they're in the private, they're their own court. Kind of something similar to like, when you issue a letter of rogatory, because that's a letter from one court to another court. So when people come to me and they say, I'm going to issue an injunction, you must be saying that you're on your own court because injunctions are issued by courts. So, you know, basically y'all just called something, something where it was just a notice that you were giving to everybody to cease and assist part of administrative process. I didn't see anything any different in these processes that y'all call injunctions other than regular administrative processes that have been conducted forever. Y'all just put a new name on it called an injunction. And then I'm wondering, do you even know what an injunction is? Yes, I know it's an equitable remedy, but it's a, it is an injunction is an order by a court. So why are you calling it an injunction? I've said this several times. I, you know, I, I don't know how many times y'all bring that to me, but a, a mandamus is one of the four great writs. You have a writ of certiorari, writ of mandamus, writ of prohibition, and a writ of habeas corpus. Those are your four major writs. You should know those as well. Writ of mandamus, writ of prohibition, uh, uh, writ of habeas corpus, and uh, was it prohibition, uh, certiorari. People keep trying to merge all the guru. Pro yeah, they do. They be trying to merge all the guru processes, you know, instead of, and here's the thing, man. I'm glad you said that. That's my whole purpose of doing SBC University so people can make their own processes because all they people are doing is just copying guru processes, all right, which they made up. They made their shit up. Okay, make your own shit up. You know what I'm saying? All you got to do is study this stuff. And then once you understand that some general principles of it, you can do your own thing. That's when you are, that's when you've reached a level. We stop copying everybody's shit and start doing your own process. But if you just understand the general principles of what we're talking about, because that by definition is truly what makes you a sovereign is when you think for yourself and your paperwork reflects who you are, not somebody else. I'm a debt collect. I'm a. I'm in a debt collection case, and the attorney wants me to do a de a deposition. Is that good or bad? Ain't nothing can come from doing a deposition. All the deposition is, they want you to get admit. You don't never do no deposition in a debt collection case because they don't have any evidence or anything to substantiate. They're not a real party in interest, and they don't have standing. But if they can get you to admit it, they don't got to prove nothing. All the deposition is an attempt for you to get to testify against yourself. That's it. Why the fuck would you do that? Plead the fifth. I'm not testifying. They don't have any evidence. They want you to testify against yourself. 
How's that a good thing? Ain't never a good thing. The prosecutor ain't never doing anything to help you. <laughs> Why would he do anything to help you? What American jurisprudence topic would you recommend starting with? Oh, good, good question. I would recommend starting with when I started, when I when I opened up an American jurisprudence, the very first thing I, I read was bills and notes to study negotiable instruments. But they got the UCC is in there. They got um, accord and satisfaction. I studied that. I studied administrative law. Definitely, you want to study administrative law. You definitely want to study unincorporated business organizations or business trusts. Um, I studied that in there. Um, you want to study. Uh, you want to study what a uh, what a um, uh, what a um, the difference between uh, de facto and de jure. Definitely start studying that because so many people use that shit they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. So study that what de facto. With the fact it says de facto, as if that means it's unlawful. De facto does not mean unlawful. De facto just means you acquiesce to it. You haven't said anything to uh to go against it. So it just kind of like it's been it's been in existence because nobody said anything. But it doesn't, that doesn't make it unlawful. So definitely that um those are some of the things I would start off with. Bills and notes, you know, definitely that's a good chapter. Trust, um, administrative, administrative law, definitely, definitely study administrative law. That's definitely that's where you go. You're gonna get a lot of good stuff out of there, off administrative law. Bond, you know, whatever, you know, you go through it. And you find a lot of interesting stuff. Probation is whatever you're interested in. Every subject is in there. If you want to start really understanding this information. That's what I would advise people to do, start with America, to really start studying the law and then, and, you know, and stop following gurus who are kind of just giving you their interpretation or their understanding of something. Congress has made little or no distinction between a state of national emergency and a state of war. Well, that's Congress that made that distinction. That's interesting. Let me see. Can you correct status on disability? You taking a benefit and a privilege. Yeah, every court has its own rules and procedures. American jurisprudence, yeah. We have the uh, the PDF the American jurisprudence at SBC University. You ain't got to pay twenty six thousand dollars for it. Uh, they try to contact contract with you. Definition of minor, yeah. Look up the definition of minor because they don't know that what the fuck they talking about with that. You know what they what they really don't understand is that you got to go and if you're coming from like a, a Minnesota Rule two twenty talking about minors. You got to go in the Minnesota statutes and look up their definition of minor, which is a person under 18 years of age and under the Uniform to Transfers to Minors Act is 21 years of age. Uh, anyway, all right, y'all. I kind of like that's it for today, I guess. I just kind of want to touch some base with y'all, give y'all some food to kind of go off of. And we got class tonight at nine o'clock, y'all. Make sure you have your ass there in class. If you ain't joined SBC University, get your ass over there. That link to this uh, website is under the description. Make sure you're at class. Like, comment, and subscribe. All right. Peace to the gods. I'll see y'all on the next stream.